30 years following the American Civil War, the most costly and destructive war in American history at the time, the United States had developed into an industrial and economic powerhouse. A combination of many factors led the U.S. to eventually outperform every major industrial power in the world. For example, a federally subsidized national rail network put American industry on the international market. New technologies such as practical incandescent bulbs mechanized farming and industrial assembly lines. And perhaps most importantly, a huge influx of immigrants, which provided almost an unlimited supply of cheap labor to supercharge the rapidly growing economy. Yet as the national GDP reached a fever pitch of almost $1 billion, questions began to be raised about the true nature of this growth and the true integrity of the American dream. This idea that any person, either immigrant or native-born, could rise to the ranks of society and reach the pinnacle of wealth and success has been the foundation of the American identity far even before the Gilded Age. However, as told through the historical literature at the time, including works such as Ragged Dick and The Jungle, this story was not a straightforward one. Most historians only look at the American dream through success stories. Of course, when you only choose to focus on these stories, uh, the American dream seems great. However, it's those same stories that attracted millions of immigrants to this land, but not all of them were as, really as fortunate. I think the concept of the American dream has been pretty well established. It's one of the most iconic parts of America. Um, if you look around, there are plenty of immigrants who started off with nothing and made their way up in society. So if you take a look at Ragged Dick, although not an immigrant, he used to spend his entirety of his sums on the theater and drinks. But now, with little effort, he is able to start saving and learn and attain his education. And so he was actually able to pick himself off of his bootstraps. These two novels, Ragged Dick and The Jungle, both had a significant impact on the American perception of society in their time. Both touch on the sensitive topic of social mobility, true laissez-faire capitalism, and the American dream. However, the two could not be more different in their interpretation of these topics. For Ragged Dick, it was an instant hit. Thousands of copies of this true American Rags to Riches success story sold out within weeks, and the novel was actually republished in the August of 1868. In fact, Ragged Dick was originally published for school children in a magazine called Student and Schoolmate. Many historians speculate that it was partially an effort during Reconstruction to remind the new generation of the values and ideals that laid the foundation for building a stronger and more united America. As for the jungle, its wild popularity arises from this unrivaled and shocking exposure of both the horrible lives of immigrant workers and the horrors of the meatpacking industry. It has a significant impact on American history as it helped initiate progressive reforms to both provide aid to struggling immigrants and instill government regulation of previously predatory industries. If you take a look at it from a capitalistic perspective, the American dream was an absolute success. We saw the creation of the middle class and when places like Russia remained a feudalistic society. And furthermore, for the first time, you can see people like Rockefeller and Carnegie who are actually concentrated at the top 1% of the wealth ladder. But where did they come from? The bottom up. Well, that's only if you're born into a situation with the right resources. For many, they aren't born with the resources needed to make it big in the first place. You need to have boots to be able to pick yourself up by the bootstraps in the first place. Take a look at Jurgis, who needed to bring along his savings to make it big in America, but as soon as he was swindled of the money, his family suffered and they were crippled, never able to make it big again. Even in the story of Ragged Dick, he had a Washington coat and Napoleon pants and needed his shoe shining materials to actually make a slight profit each time. So going back to Jurgis, of course he started off at the bottom of the social ladder when he came to America. Every immigrant starts off like that, but that doesn't mean he wasn't able to get big. When he joined the graph system, he earned hundreds of dollars on his own. And what did he do with them? Spend it on alcohol. The American dream applies to those who are hardworking and responsible. In what way was someone who left his family and profited on his own responsible? Now let's take a look at Ragged Dick. His coat came from hard work. It was a gift from Frank for giving such a marvelous tour. He was conscious of where he was in society and tried to move up. After his encounter with Frank, he opened up a bank account and started to spend his money responsibly. So if you take a look at the book on page 58, he had $4 left in his pocketbook, but he had previously determined not to touch. In fact, he had formed 
the ambitious design of starting an account at a savings bank in order to have something to fall back upon in case of sickness or any other emergency or at any rate as a reserve to fund to expend on clothing or other ne necessary articles when he required them. This is exactly why Ragged Dick was a success story and the jungle was a tragedy. So if you take a look at page 77 of Ragged Dick, you can see, moreover, he had perseverance and was not easily discouraged. He had made up his mind and must know more and was not disposed to complain to the difficulty of his task. So you can see how Dick is actually studying and becoming successful while Jurgis is actually irresponsibly spending his money on alcohol. Some argued during the time that the American dream was totally realizable for all that lived in America. However, other people may argue that the American dream cannot be achieved due to the corrupt practices of the government and the people with money, which is the dark side of the American dream. But with rampant strikes needed to make a profit, people are willing to stoop to unimaginable lows. And during this time of laissez-faire economics, we also saw rampant corruption. The worst part is, is that it was a negative cycle, because the government could not step in, for they too were also corrupt. Politicians, senators, were led by political bosses who would take bribes to get things done, and the senators' positions and votes can be bought. In the jungle, we saw this manifest as the only way for Jurgis to make a reasonable amount of money was to join the corrupt political system itself. Also, he was only able to make money when he didn't directly obey the system. Uh, for example, when he decided to start stealing. The ruling district was the Democratic boss, a little Irishman named Mike Scully. Scully's willingness to wield and deal with his opponents proves that the difference between Republican and Democrat is mainly window dressing in the world of the jungle. It doesn't matter what either party stands for, as long as both parties are totally in the pockets of wealthy businessmen. Even if America is at its lowest point in history, full of corruption and oppression from capitalism, you can't expect an immigrant to go and change the entire system. But there's still social mobility and ways to work up in society in such a corrupt system. And that still means that the American dream can be achieved, just not through ethical means. In the jungle, the entire family was trying their best to move up in such a corrupt system. But playing by the rules did not go well for them and left them with less than they could earn. So it wasn't that they didn't work hard, it was that their work wasn't properly valued. But if you take a look at Jurgis, after he left the family, he actually moved up in, on the social ladder because of the graph system. So you can't deny the dream because the system is corrupt. So looking at Ragged Dick on page 131, we have a quote where Dick is actually trying to move up in society rather than spend his money irresponsibly. So Dick left the counting room hardly knowing whether he stood on his head or his heels. So overjoyed was he at the sudden change of his fortunes. $10 a week was to him a fortune, and three times as much as he had expected to obtain at first. Indeed, he would have been glad only the day before to get a place at $3 a week. What's worse than the filthy corruption that is quite evident in society at the time is the treatment of labor workers. They were constantly abused and oppressed. The American dream was so good, it should apply to everyone. But there were always certain workers who were more abused than others. Things like discrimination, whether it be if you were Slavic or Lithuanian. Jurgis, for example, his boss took um, his work without paying him back, took advantage of the fact that he couldn't speak English well. Um, things like him getting his house swindled through legal contracts. He was abused so much more than the average worker simply because of where he came from. So workers actually formed unions because of abuse. Many of these leaders were actually first generation immigrants and these unions established change within the working system. And so it actually established a five day working weekend, safe working conditions, and the actual impact of the jungle actually completely reformed the working conditions of the meat factories and created the FDA and poison squad. Yet with all this talk of labor unions and horrible working conditions, let's put this all into perspective with the immigrant experience. So in terms of the actual immigration experience, integration is a process, not a specific moment. You can start off at the bottom and not be used to American culture. If you look at the jungle, when Jurgis and his family first arrived, they couldn't speak English and had to find jobs as labor workers because of the barriers. They were not aware of all the dirty tricks and corruption in society. But when Jurgis actually learned how to speak English, he began to actually adapt to society, profiting off of the underground gas system. 
and where the criminals and the police were actually connected. He began to latch on American ideals afterwards, such as socialism, and actually began to have social mobility through his integration into American culture. But in perspective of Ragged Dick, first off, he wasn't an immigrant, while Jurgis was Lithuanian. He literally just got lucky because he met a man who happened to be rich and understand his situation well enough to give him money. Take a look at the jungle. Ona and Maria had to resort to prostitution in order to make a living, and success never came from hard work. Jurgis had to actually resort to drinking after Ona ended up dying in the book. For example, in chapter 5 on page 52, it says, No one in Packingtown makes a living off of good work. If you saw a man rising, he was a knave. The man who told tales and spied upon his fellows would rise, but the man who minded his own business and did his work, why, they would speed him up till he had worn him out, and then they would throw him away into the gutter. The only way to be successful in Packingtown was through unethical means. Another really good example is when, throughout the entirety of the book, Jurgis and his family basically had to work in the filthiest conditions. For example, on page 129, it talks about how when working in his shirt sleeves, he, and with the thermometer at over 100, the phosphate soaked through every pore of Jurgis' skin, and in five minutes, he already had a headache, and in 15, he was almost dazed. The blood was pounding in his brain like an engine throbbing, and there was a frightful pain at the top of his skull, and he could hardly control his hands. This shows that the conditions of the factory will ultimately one of the most revolting and disgusting places to work, making him look aesthetically unpleasing with grime and stuff all over his body. And these were just simply horrible conditions where he worked long hours and ultimately he got very little pay for the dangerous conditions that he was working in. So Jurgis could have actually spent his money responsibly, not on alcohol, and he also could have refrained himself from hitting Phil Connor a second time. And this would have kept him where he was in the society high up in the graph system. But instead, he chose to spend his money irresponsibly. So as, on, as seen on page 137, um, one day, however, he took the plunge and drank up all that he had in his pockets and went home half-piped. It was a battle that had no end, that could have... Uh, that never could have won. So, what does this mean for us in the modern time? Well, many of the problems shown in both Jungle and Ragged Dick still exist today. The wealth gap is currently on the rise in America, and there has been a decline in union membership across the nation. The immigrant experience is still, and forever will be, a backbone to this nation's identity and success. As we step into an uncertain future, one thing is for sure. The American dream despite whatever interpretations one may have of it, represents the best of us and the optimism that we require when confronting the problems of our time.